morning and welcome friends. The title of today's talk, The New Year. Next Sunday's talk, Goals and Aspirations. Every first and third Sunday at 12.30 p.m. we read and discuss selected writings. Next Sunday being the first Sunday of January, we'll be continuing our reading and discussion of The Key to Theosophy by HBB. The United Lodge of Theosophists Declaration. The policy of this lodge is independent devotion to the cause of theosophy, without professing attachment to any theosophical organization. It is, the, it is loyal to the great founders of the theosophical movement, but does not concern itself with dissensions and differences of individual opinion. The work it has on hand and the end it keeps in view are too absorbing and too lofty to leave a time or inclination to take part in side issues. That work and that end is the dissemination of the fundamental principles of the philosophy of theosophy and the exemplification and practice of those principles through a truer realization of the self, a profounder conviction of universal brotherhood. It holds that the unassailable basis for union among theosophists, wherever and however situated, is similarity of aim, purpose, and teaching, and therefore has neither constitution, bylaws, nor officers the sole bond between its associates being that basis, and it aims to disseminate this idea among theosophists in the furtherance of unity. It regards as theosophists all those who are engaged in the true service of humanity without distinction of race, creed, sex, condition, or organization, and it welcomes to its association all those who are in accord with its declared purposes and who desire to fit themselves by studying otherwise to the better able to help and teach others. The true theosophist belongs to no cult or sect, yet belongs to each and all. The following is the form signed by associates of the United Lodge of Theosophists. Being in sympathy with the purpose of this lodge, as set forth in its declaration, I hereby record my desire to be enrolled as an associate, it being understood that such association calls for no obligation on my part other than that which I myself determine. Now today's reading. Light on the path. Before the eyes can see, they must be incapable of tears. Before the ear can hear, it must have lost its sensitiveness. Before the voice can speak in the presence of the masters, it must have lost the power to wound. Before the soul can stand in the presence of the masters, its feet must be washed in the blood of the heart. Kill out ambition. Kill out desire of life. Desire, kill out desire of comfort. Work as those work who are ambitious. Respect life as those who desire it. Be happy as those who, are, who live for happiness. Seek in the heart the source of evil and expunge it. It lives fruitfully in the heart of the devoted disciple as well as in the heart of the man of desire. Only the strong can kill it out. The, the weak must wait for its growth, its fruition, its death. And it is a plant that lives and increases throughout the ages. It flowers when the man has accumulated unto himself innumerable existences. He who will enter upon the path of power must tear this thing out of his heart, and then the heart will bleed, and the whole of life of the man seem to be utterly dissolved. This ordeal must be endured. It may come at the first step of the perilous ladder which leads to the path of life. It may not come until the last. But, O oh, disciple, remember that it has to be endured, and fasten the energies of your soul upon the task. Live neither in the present nor the future, but in the eternal. This giant weed cannot flower there, this blot upon existence is wiped out by the very atmosphere of eternal thought. Kill out all sense of separateness. Kill out desire for sensation. Kill out the hunger for growth. Yet stand alone and isolated, because nothing that is embodied, nothing that is conscious of separation, nothing that is out of the eternal can aid you. Learn from sensation and observe it because only so can you commence the science of self-knowledge 
and plant your foot on the first step of the ladder. Grow as the flower grows, unconsciously, but eagerly anxious to open its soul to the air. So must you press forward to open your soul to the eternal. But it must be the eternal that draws forth your strength and beauty, not desire of growth. For in the one case you develop the, in the luxuriance of purity, in the other you harden by the forceful passion for personal stature. Desire only that which is within you. Desire only that which is beyond you. Desire only that which is unattainable. For within you is the light of the world, the only light that can be shed upon the path. And now for today's talk for the meter. Thank you, friends. January 4, that's this coming Thursday, will be the Theosophical New Year. For ages, the 4th of January has been sacred to Mer Mercury Buddha, also known as Thoth Hermes, the god credited with adding brains to the heads of those who are civil to him. So it is January 4th, which was selected by theosophists, especially esoteric theosophists, as their new year. Everything combines to make of it a festival to be held by those who study ancient wisdom. January 1, on the other hand, is known as the day of Januarius, or Janus, the double-faced God of time servers. Yet HPB said it is well named to be celebrated by all the political opportunists the world over. One face of Jaina, uh, the God, is turned regretfully toward the past, and the other stares hopelessly into the future with a wide open eye that bespeaks the ignorance of the God. Engraved in the god's right hand is the number 300, and on his left is six, the number 65. In one hand, a scepter, and the other, a key, whence the name janitor, the doorkeeper of the heavens. So everything in nature has its rhythmic, harmonious movement. Skilled actors in any line of endeavor are those who work meticulously with the law. Every one of our acts, experiences, and undertakings depends for its fruition upon some phase of the universal law of periodicity. gardener knows to plant and harvest his crops according to the natural seasons of the year. <coughs> Even efforts to improve the mind by study require the cooperative movement of cycles just as truly as the casting of seeds in the spring. We have talks on cycles. Periodicity means that whatever the waters of life wash up to one's feet is the commensurate return of what the man himself has sent out. To work constructively with the law, to align one's energies with the creative tides of nature, man must be able to calculate his position in relation to each cycle. Ignorance of the meaning and the times of the cycles leads to defeat. We are in the winter solstice right now, and the sun is entering the sign of Capricornius. The sun has already, since December 21, ceased to advance 
in the southern hemisphere and is slowly arcing northward. The beginning of the year has always had relation to the return of the sun. A return which brings quite revivifying influences to all kingdoms of nature. These influences touch the inner life of all forms and give a renewed impetus to expansion and growth. The respective festivals of the year and their dates were all fixed according to the sun, the father of all calendars, and of the zodiac, or the sun god, and the twelve great but still minor gods, which they became subsequently sacred in the cycle of national and tribal religions. So modern uh, New Year festivals have their roots in the pagans, as do virtually all of our holy days. Uh, natural science investigators have, con have confirmed the theosophical doctrine of periodicity by accumulating a vast amount of evidence showing that events move in cycles. But science as a whole cuts itself off from fields of experience beyond the physical, where the arc of any cycle is complete. Theosophy, on the other hand, begins with the soul and includes all, both spiritual and physical. Be prepared and knowing the cycle is coming, students of true occultism, which is theosophy, may benefit deeply by the influx of spiritual energy. Whether one's motive is good or evil, the tides of great impersonal cycles multiply it a hundredfold. Nothing can be done against cycles, said Mr. Judge, but a whole lot can be done in them. Our task is to so poise ourselves that we possess the power to live on the crest of each wave of life. The ancients were aware that there comes a new and fresh vigor from within outward to all channels of light, gradually strengthening as the sun moves nearer. They realize that life is one through all its manifestations. They con consciously see seize the birth of the year as the opportune time to reaffirm their highest aspirations. HPB wrote, let no one imagine that it is a mere fancy that a catching of importance to the birth of the year uh, is important. The earth passes through its phases and man with it, and as a day can be colored, so can a year. The astral life of the earth is young and strong between Christmas and Easter. Those who form their wishes now will have added strength to fulfill them consistently. Those who make resolutions and who uh, send New Year's greetings with all this in mind can look back upon their successes and failures of the past year and resolve to make more strenuous efforts towards the goal of self-knowledge and unselfish effort. self-knowledge and unselfish effort in the forefront as we study, apply, and repromulgate theosophy as it was given by those who brought it. By every means of our power, we continue to draw attention to the fact that there is a complete body of knowledge brought to the world by HPB 
and named by her Theosophy. We have put forward as a matter of justice to the message and gratitude to the messenger that only that which she gave and so named should be entitled to name Theosophy. To conserve the message of Theosophy in its purity is our earnest endeavor. There are many reasons for this, a key one being that HPV's attest is the only visible means by which the genuine may be, may be distinguished from the counterfeit. We have repeatedly called attention to the fact that without recognition of the existence of masters of wisdom, there is no reason for the existence of a body of knowledge such as that HPV brought to us. This said, we do not deify or follow a person. We simply recognize a fact and govern ourselves accordingly. Imagine, as Mr. Judge did, an allegorical umbrella held between mankind and the spiritual sun which protects humanity from spiritual forces beyond its present power of assimilation. The transmitters of those forces, the adepts, the elder brothers, the masters of wisdom of the human race, modify those forces and the handle of the umbrella is in every man's hand. The umbrella part makes visible the idea that there are elder brothers protecting us until we can learn better. The handle part says that each of us can link to that umbrella in universal brotherhood. The handle placed in our hands underscores the implicit belief that the final authority is in the man himself. So this is a good time of the year to look back to our teachers in gratitude and look forward to our opportunity to carry on with the great work of the masters who come before us from time to time. It is a time to be uplifted by their message and to gain confidence that we are all linked to them and to each other. We can increasingly benefit mankind as we act and learn to be like the masters. Especially at the New Year time, it is for each one to sense his spiritual powers, to feel the beneficence of the teacher's presence, and look with them into the principles of things. Then confidence being renewed, in the spiritual influences available to the ego mind and aspiring heart, every man strengthens his light and the whole chain out of regard for the one goal in view. All that we desire to do has a greater impulsion now than at some other time of the year. To make practical the sublime metaphysics of theosophical philosophy, it is necessary to apply them in every phase of human experience. The turning of the annual cycle is an event, like every other event in time, which has deep occult significance. The reason for our failures is that we do not understand our own natures. So we are not able to use the force and influence that lie within us, resulting in our frequent failure to carry out resolutions of any kind. Our first mistake is to make negative rather than positive resolutions. say I will not drink, I lie, do this, out of the other. The proper resolve is to, to, we would need to make is I will do the opposite of what I am doing. In this case, we make a direct affirmation of will. 
while the other form of resolution puts us in a negative position. Perhaps we have thought that because we don't do a number of questionable things, we're good. But really, we are merely not bad. Again, a negative position. True goodness is a positive position. To effect our resolutions, we must call on our indomitable will. And we're not talking about the strong desire to gain one's selfish ends. Yes, behind will does stand desire. It is our will and related desire that we use consciously until our bodies proceed automatically like regulation of our breathing and heartbeat. We don't have to think about that. It just does it automatically. The real tr and true will is known as spiritual will. That will flies like lightning and cuts all obstacles like a sharp sword. It is that will proceeding from the highest spiritual past of our natures which causes man to be an evolution from within outward. And that's in that process we automatically we learn to automatically do things like the heartbeat. Through all the forms of uh, substance and uh, that have been and to continue evolving instru as instruments in the state of matter. All powers that exist or can exist are latent in the spiritual nature. We draw from the spiritual nature in degree, but in small degree, because most of us think that life means nothing more than this physical existence. We were once conscious of our spiritual nature, but we came down through the planes of matter to this plane, and we made, uh, made a growth in intellectuality at the expense of spiritual, spiritual perception. With our intellect, we always reason from premises to conclusions, whereas the spiritual nature has the power to direct cognition, cognition of the nature of anything regarded. So our intellectual gain was at the loss of spiritual insight. So it, it is useless for theology, science, and psychology to proceed from the personal and physical perceptions in order to get an understanding of what man really is as their psychological causes are but reflections of the physical <coughs> ideas. If we are going to realize our own natures, we must assume the highest point of our nature and hold to the power of that assumption. We are always using our will along the lines of our likes and dislikes. The Bhagavad Gita tells us that a wise man should not fall in the power of these two passions. For they are the enemies of man. What is most necessary for us is a proper basis for thinking. We need to eject false ideas that have pre permeated humanity. We need to understand the purpose of life and to see that we are the product of many of our own prior lives. We need to recognize our evolution under that true and merciful law which operates everywhere. It is because of that law that operates in a, uh, in a round of impression that we have the tendency each year to make New Year's resolutions. We could, by our, an, an understanding and using this law of recurrence, bring it to effect those resolutions. So the desire that stands behind will will help us to make our resolutions, but the resolu res resolutions will never do us any good if we don't sustain them. We have to maintain the, the, the desire by ex exerting our will 
and cleaving to the object uh, that uh, will uh, throughout. And we can't get rid of the evil in us or any unpleasant thing by thinking of it. It is truly said that we attach to anything by thinking about it. So the harder we don't think about the evil things in us, the better. Think about their opposites and the evil will not have the chance to return. Attachment is by thought, first of all. Desire exists in thought, first of all. Then follows action. So we must have a firm basis for our thinking if we are to ever, if we are ever going to express ourselves as we should as spiritual beings. We have our own pet theories, our religious philosophies, because they conform to our desires, not because they conform to truth or that they are an explanation of all the mysteries we see about us. That is why after so many thousands of years of what we call civilization, we have become none the wiser, still moving in the same old treadmill of life, death, sorrow, suffering, and pain. We bind ourselves to this treadmill by our own thoughts and actions. We do not have to keep on following along in these planes of error. But, but there is a chance for us if we understand our own natures. So we need to resolve to know, to think right, to do right, to acquire some of the knowledge that has always existed. The knowledge of man as a spiritual being through all of his fluctuations in the realm of matter. As we rely, rely more and more on ourselves, on, on the self within, the higher self, we begin to express and use the power which we already have. And that is far more than we imagine. We have to help ourselves by taking the suggestions already given in, in the teachings of theosophy, which are the master's suggestions. And then as the sustaining power of the will is held along the line in which we desire to do, more direct help comes from the elder brothers who are willing and anxious to meet those clear-eyed enough to see their true destiny and noble-hearted enough to work for the great orphan humanity. Many eyes are turned with hopeful longing toward the golden age of tomorrow, which someone else somehow will bring about. The religionist uh, passes from one expounder of the cosmic harmonies to another, while he quietly thinks the Sermon on the Mount is a mere tract of other times. Because some good men have been naive, goodness is decried as naivete. Because self-control is rare, it is not natural. And because brotherhood and unselfishness with difficulty surmount the weaknesses of human nature, they are visionary and impractical. The occult future of 2018 is concealed in the exoteric past of 2017 and preceding years. But man in this dark cycle is denied as a collective whole the faculty of foresight. During this dark age of materialism, we act as either ants laying by provisions for old age or as grasshoppers in a perpetual buzz and somber song. The selfish care of the one and the utter recklessness of the other make both this disregard and often remain entirely ignorant of any serious duty towards humankind. Many people love only those who share their respective ways of thinking. They care nothing for the future of the races of the world, nor will they give a thought, if they can help it, to postmortem life. 
When they think about death, it is generally about the glories of heaven or the asbestos of hell. Happy are those warriors by whom death is regarded as a tender and merciful mother. She rocks her sick children in the sweet sleep on her cold, soft bosom, while, uh, uh, but to awake them a moment after healed of all ailing, happy and with a tenfold reward for every past tear. The ideas and ideals of an age uh, select its leader, be he Caesar or Christ. The real rulers of an age are those who provide the ideas that rule the lives of the rest. The cloistered teachers, the clever authors, the impassioned pam pamphleteers. It is assuredly a crime to murder a human being, but what about those who have murdered the idea of morality, of beauty, self-discipline, mortality? Who is more to blame, the trained partisan who blends irresponsibility with passion, who's plausible for arguments amid facts, or the fanatical psychic who accepts the arguments, weaving them into dogmas of hate and destruction, or the sheep who follow, some eager, some reluctant? The cycles of nature keep to their courses. And in the fullness of time, the year is born, without man J or nay. But saviors of the world are born by will. The cycle of the Buddha is begun by himself, bringing to birth a new age for all the world. Our theosophical tenets hold that every person is endowed more or less with a magnetic potentiality, which, when helped by a sincere and especially an indomitable will, is the most effective of magnetic levers placed by nature in human hands. May we use our will to send our sincere greetings and best wishes as the new year begins to every living creature under the sun, especially those who may be our enemies. The prepared talk, now show turn. Yes. Can you read, thank you. Can you please again tell us why January 4th is the Theosophical New Year instead of the 1st? Yes, yes. 4th of January uh, is sacred to Mer it's, it's been sacred to Mercury Buddha, Tars, Her or Tars Hermes, the, the, this god is called uh, both. Uh, depending on whether it's uh, Egyptian or, or another or part of the world, perhaps uh, Hindu. Uh, the god create credited with aiding, with adding brains to the he heads of those who are civil to him. Okay, is there yeah. a special celebration or anything that you know? In well, the those uh, society I don't know if there's any. Yeah, those uh, you know, the theosophists might be get together at on or near that date, like today is a special mm -hmm. day for, for uh, uh, saying hello to the new year and yeah. goodbye to the old year, uh, uh, because it's mm -hmm. the first, uh, it's, it's the last Sunday before we get to January 4. And in that celebration, is it to, to do what? I mean, it's going to gonna be within, different from the, the January uh, you, 1st. You, to look within and um, use our use our powers within ourselves mm -hmm. to lift ourselves up. And another comment on that. But isn't this the period where HPV says the gods descend? So there is significance to it that they are available as mm -hmm. forces of nature, and those of us who as align mm -hmm. ourselves with that current can actually feel their presence and through that um, indomitable willpower uh, you can actually have resolutions come to fruition if it is for the benefit of humanity in other words. Mm -hmm. So it is divine knowledge we're talking about here which is esoteric and esotericism is in each human heart. Mm -hmm. I put it here but it's really 
the invisible heart we're talking about here, which exactly. is correlated to the spiritual central sun and the Buddha, Mer Mercury, Hermes, is that light brought into the world during this period of time. So it does have tremendous significance in our lives. Sure. And does that, does that sort of automatically happen or we have to... Uh, Nothing automatically look, happens. Look, look up to that, right? Look up to that higher self is what you described. Well, actually in you're looking inward. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, up being inward, yeah. But the 21st, uh, uh, there's also the literature has got uh, quite a few names of gods that uh, descended uh, around 17 the 20th, of November 22nd or so. 17 of November being one of them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Near the solstice? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when one thinks uh, in theosophical terms about the resolutions for the new year, uh, the difference with the rest of the whatever we're doing on January 1st, thinking about new resolutions, on the 4th is thinking more on community, I mean society, brotherhood, rather Bro brotherhood, than individual okay. resolutions. Is that right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Like these medical things, uh, thou shalt do no harm. You know, when, yeah. when, when we think right. and act, if we do it in a selfish way, we're doing harm. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we're trying to help all of humanity. Yeah. What were you reading yeah. from? What was I reading from? Um, various articles. I think I think HPV wrote the year is dead, long live the year. There's a couple of few, few articles. I'd be happy to get them to you if you want me to. Thank you for the confirmation. Mm -hmm. So you'll, if, I, I, I guess I need your information if you want me to get that to me. You can email. Yeah, but I, I need it easy, yeah. Okay, sure, I'll be glad to do that. Yeah. This is a, com a compilation of several 20 minute, 25 minutes worth of uh, uh, the most important things I, I uh, the spirit thought were in these articles. It and it's all based on uh, uh, these books, The Secret Doctrine. ICE is going to unveil the secret doctrine uh, and what Mr. Judge uh, left us. The voice was, was uniform throughout the whole talk. So you say you compiled different writings, but it all sounded the same voice. Well, I kind of, you know. If it said something similar in one writing and something in the other, I may have summarized uh, the two so that I could present them in a few seconds or whatever uh, you know the sound bite was. I liked it. <laughs> Thank so you. Be, be glad to give you any more information uh, in writing from the sources. I'm subject to mistakes, so you have to go to the source if you really. Uh, Well, you know, you have to think, you know, think about it individually, individually too. You know, not not ask to accept anything. You know. So, in your talk, you said that um, if our resolutions are dependent on positive into input into ourselves, it has a better chance of becoming. Uh, applicable to our life during that year is was that correct? Absolutely, yeah. If uh, yeah, the whole the whole idea, you, you know, we, we're taught uh, that if we want to squash out a behavior in ourselves or a child or whatnot, you don't focus on that behavior. You focus on the opposite for that uh, to that. That's uh, that was what what was in the talk too. Uh, Think about a positive thing. If you want to, uh, inf you know, emphasize truthfulness, you emphasize it that way rather than remind them of all the lies they've told. Whatever. Focus on trying to be accurate or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to lose weight, if you're obese and you want to lose, say, fifty pounds, then you're actually 
thinking about seeing yourself thin. And you, you see yourself thin, you get on those scales every day. And, and you, you tell you your mind right? that this is what you're going to achieve mm -hmm. in a certain period of time. What do, I, what do I have to do to get thin? I have to exercise, I have to eat right, I have to think positive, I have to do all these things. And, and keep working at it and we're gonna we'll fall on our face maybe the first day the first few days or maybe a few days we'll do it and a few days we won't but if we keep focused on our, on our list of whatever we need to do uh, our chances of success are much greater um, talking uh, again about resolutions you explained to us that on the fourth, the, the gods descend and there's an impulse uh, or something, wisdom that, you know, that will guide us, right? Mm -hmm. It seems that there's some sort of impulse or something in January the 1st that people, who peop the people believe, because why do, the, uh, do people choose to make resolutions on the 1st? Is there a pagan idea floating around and uh, passed on through the ages that January 1st is the best day to make resolutions? I know it's the year, yeah. the new year may be the reason, but is there something else? The short answer is a fact of nature. It's a life wave that passes through. And it's uh, the, I at the end of the year, and then we have the quickening as we as we go into Easter. I mean, look around us. Uh, you know, that's when the grass grows Spring. and the, the yeah. trees get green, and so that, that, that that's a that's a good time of the year to so it's uh, pagan, to right? to come up with a, a change, yeah, mm. or, or to solidify. A, a solidify is not a good word. To, or, or to try to focus on you know what, what you're doing right and try to uh, you know. So there's some Get sort of impulse. That. There's what? Impulse. There's a, yeah, there's a, a natural impulse yeah. uh, at this mm -hmm. time of the year. Between December and Easter, the I think. The solstice? Between solstice. the solstice? Yeah, the solstice. Weather solstice. November, December 17th. Uh, yeah. yeah. You had done. Uh, yeah, but it's not just on the physical plane because the astral light of Earth is regenerated during this period also. The electromagnetic sphere is electromagnetically regenerated, so it has mm -hmm. strength in it during this period. Absolutely. We're not separate from the solar system. We, we, look, at, we look at the way we're de we develop and, and, and the processes we go through uh, and wherever we're at, we've been around since we never, it said we never were not, nor will she ever, or we ever not be. So we're going through the cycles along with the, the, system, the solar system, along with the Earth. And uh, things are happening naturally, and we need to get on board. That's what basically I, what's, what this student saw in this talk. Not that not that we're not that we don't try to do something better in June, but this is the time to to really think about you know what we want to do uh, for the coming year. You also mentioned the will, the spiritual will. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that that also has um, regenerative power during this period that we can actually tap into that resource easier? I think that's correct. Absolutely. But we have to, I mean, we have to have that in, that indomitable, we have to pursue that, or, it, you know, to tap into that spiritual will. But the, you know, it, it, it makes sense that as nature uh, is changing, uh, it's the time is ripe to uh, focus on tapping into that spiritual will. Focus well, more on that. It should be focused on all the time. Well, the student's understanding is that that's the volition of the higher mind. Right. And that if you're not aligned with it, in our words, it is not concerned about personal stuff. It's no. concerned about impersonal stuff. Mm -hmm. So then if your effort is uh, in consideration of the whole, or a l larger uh, aspect of uh, communal life, then 
perhaps it is more accessible, but it does not really concern itself with personal achievements at all. It doesn't care. For it. Yeah, it's not uh, focused on purpose personal though. No. It's it's the wave. The, the wave itself is, if if you will, natural. Okay. Now you know, it start. It might start with thinking, right thinking, and so forth. That's really. I guess you can think about that sometimes as personal, but it's got to evolve into something that's impersonal. And it's, it, it really becomes a life wave. It's not, not really even material when you're talking about life waves. That's what kind of helps drive everything, and that's what you have to, if you try to, try to go along with that, your chances of success, success are much <coughs> greater. But if you, try to, if you try to plant a crop out of season, probably not going to have a crop. But it's just an, an outside example of what, what I'm trying to illustrate. So we need to, you know, understand, uh, become more cognizant of, for example, the Zodiac has never been, I, I don't know that I had ever any exposure to that until I started studying Theosophy, not to speak of anyway. I they're kind of thought of as, uh, as a myth, you know. Uh, something that uh, is not real, and it seems now like it's it's very real, you know. In Latin America, talking about the horoscope, not the horoscope, but the zodiac, but what sign you are, it's common. Like everyone knows what uh, what the sign means and everything, and they talk among friends, family, and uh, everything, compatibility and all that stuff. I know that's a superficial level, but we're stuck up, I guess. But I think you meant is cosmical significance because um, I think it is explained in the writing that uh, humanity goes through 12 uh, stages uh, in a one mantra and those stages are recorded in the signs of the zodiac. So it has tremendous cosmical significance. Um, we were not just uh, mentioning the uh, sign that each person mm -hmm. is born yeah. yeah, which is why I said but it's more superficial, <laughs> but, it's it talks but it talks about personality yeah. traits yeah. and how right. compatible you are. It's well, very yeah. common uh, conversation. Well, that yeah. is also important because mm -hmm. uh, our character is important, mm -hmm. and the sign uh, shows what you have come to do, perhaps, to improve in that direction. I don't really mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, that's a start, but we, if we, if we as long as you don't keep it at the physical level, I mean, that, that's, uh, you, know, I, you know, you hear about those things too, and you see the fortune teller sign and all that, that's, that's the way we kind of, part of society takes off on the idea of mm -hmm. the zodiac and all those signs, yeah. but uh, this has, uh, it has deep spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the student is trying, is trying to get across. Uh, not necessarily reli focusing on total personality. I don't know what or any of that stuff, any of that. But, uh, but there's a thought here. Um, there's always uh, a mention of desire as being the uh, power the that makes us want to do things. Mm -hmm. So is that desire also available for this effort you were talking about? Or how does that change with these universal resolutions because behind will it says stems desire well mm -hmm. if you don't have some desire to do something what is moving the will then is my question well desire <coughs> in this is, is essential you, you've got to have it's got to be consistent too you have to you have to stay with it whatever your new year's resolution is and if, if you don't, you, uh, you can establish a plan you know, on a physical level. And we're talking about losing weight. That's a good example we can all relate to on a physical uh, on a physical plane. If we just think about, oh, I'd like to lose weight and then go out and have two dinners one evening and things like that, you know, and, and keep on your old habits, n never exercising, never, d never doing anything to, to implement uh, that desire to to lose weight, you're not going to lose weight. <coughs> but habit formation takes many, many lifetimes, so it is not really that easy to also destroy your habits 
and I'll start new ones. You said indomitable willpower is yeah. required. Yeah. So well but if your will wavers, then you're not going to succeed. It what absolutely. You say. So you, you kind of hinted on what this student has a great deal of uh, difficulty transitioning to. You see, we're talking about not paying attention to time, okay? Because time, as we know it, we're talking about a lifetime. We, you know, at, at 10 years old, we think 80 years is a long time. We'll find, we'll, as we approach 80, it doesn't seem to so, be so long anymore. As, as uh, Mr. Judge has in, in the ocean, the time periods, we're talking about Manvantras, billions of years. You know, we're, we go through these cycles over and over and over again, uh, moving along uh, uh, as we do. But we only think about, because, because we're in this material world, primarily that 80 years we're here, or however long we're here in this life, this is just a nothing compared to how, who we are. We only see, we only see that physical existence uh, in front of us. We we don't know that there are seven worlds going on out there at the same time, uh, di uh, different uh, different phases, and we go through all those things, and seven times seven, and all that. So 80 yes. years is not a small period of time in the sense that look at the Theosophical Movement initiators. Mm -hmm. They came and she lived 61. He, he left <laughs> after nearly 45 years. And look at the amount of literature they left behind for those uh, coming generations to find. So each human life has significance in the sense that in Kali Yuga you can achieve a whole lot of work in just one short lifetime. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, very significant. But yeah. the, the important point is that the West, the um, lost accord of uh, Christianity is not right. there. Karma and reincarnation. This yeah. philosophy will not make any sense to anyone without that continuity of consciousness. Yeah, you got to have and all that in there. Coming and so. going, coming and going. There is really no death. Uh, so if the population understood that, would we be afraid of dying? People in the East simply look at death as dropping mm -hmm. the physical body. The other entity, the inner life, still goes on. Mm -hmm. It's just at a different level of consciousness. So why aren't the uh, Western peoples more amenable to accepting that philosophy? Why is so much resistance against it? Well, it's the superstition of the East and the materialism of the West, and no matter how mi how much you stand out in front of the mirror and tell yourself, "I am not this body," and go through that routine uh, that we typically go through, you know, it's very difficult to realize that our body is simply a vehicle that we're to take care of while it's here, but that's not us. Uh, for the benefit of all, um, can you please explain what Kali Yuga is? The last uh, student comment uh, mentioned that word. Yeah, Kali Yuga. Why don't we just look it up, the definition. But Kali Yuga is an immense period of time. Uh, uh, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's the Iron Age. They're yeah. basically the Iron Age, the Golden Age, and the, the Silver, bronze, the Silver Age, and the Bronze, and the bronze Age. Four, basically, we have four ages that we keep, we keep cycling through. And uh, that's about is it well, five thousand years it. or something like that. Uh, if he has difficulty seeing, read it. Okay. Uh, it says the fourth of the Black or Iron Age, our present period, the duration of which is four hundred thirty-two thousand years. The last of the ages into which the evolutionary period of man is divided by a series of such ages. It began three three thousand one hundred two years B.C. at the moment of Krishna's death. And the first cycle of 5,000 years will end between the years 1897 and 1898. That's it. So uh, HPV was around, around uh, was until just before then. 1891. Uh, the end of, the, end of the first 5,000 years. But what's particular about it? But it's nothing. You know, it, it's not. Uh, those numbers are not necessarily locked in concrete for you. Uh, you know, on an individual basis, because if one is one could be in the golden age now, if they, they think if the thinking is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are those. It says that there are those around us currently in the golden age. 
In other words, they are spiritual. Yeah, they are spiritual beings. Yeah, in Kali Yuga, uh, materialism is in ascendancy, mm -hmm. and human nature uh, guides itself through power, position, and money. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the West, uh, that is very prominent. Yeah. Uh, in the East, not so. But uh, unfortunately for us, the East wants to catch up to the West yeah. in that direction. I was we are not influencing them. China, right for way. example, it's against India the materialistic too. Yeah, yeah. It's an economic Japan. power. I lived in Japan That's for a while, and the people yeah. were in, in India too. And India people as well. want to, you know, be, yeah. be yeah. like Everybody the Everybody wants Americans, to be like the yeah. West. Because they yeah. see prosperity in terms of the well, physical. Well, they don't see the poor here yeah. too. We have well, a lot of poor people here as well. Until you come here, you don't know about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. No, oh, you don't know. Really I'm don't telling you my oh. experience. Yeah, well because people uh, think you don't yeah, know. You poor think it's a prosperous gold country. Is yeah, not, uh, gold money is like not that. in the street. You have to work for it. Mm -hmm. And here in the states, we work like slaves more than any other nation. We work yeah. for it. Well, so but tell you that it's not all slaves. bad because you got a lot more opportunities, I think, to to make a difference in Caliuga than you might in the golden age. But there are also those minds here in the West who I think are quite awakened to the inner uh, possibilities of the soul because you see individuals doing really worthy work. Like uh, one guy went to uh, South America and I, I don't know whether it was in Brazil or somewhere else, uh, the kids were all running around bare feet and cutting their feet in the um, dirt, infection setting mm -hmm. in, in the foot. And when he came to the United States, he started a shoe company. Mm -hmm. And for every pair he sells, he donates a pair mm -hmm. yeah, to this uh, nation yeah. for their kids. So, and then there is the other kid who went to uh, Africa trying to bring uh, water to villages. And these are school age kids, yeah. and they are awakened to that reality they're within college themselves. Graduates. They're college graduates. And now they also are. There's also a company for lenses, and there's also for socks. There's several mm -hmm. startups. But the yeah. and then there is that other yeah. kid, uh, a girl, who wanted to help uh, a student in Africa because they didn't have anything, and her mother helped her um, formulate a website. Kivera. Is it I, don't know. I, I don't remember it takes well, name. You know, the, you hear lots of stories of these yeah. young guys these 11 years old, old. What can they're, I do to help? These are you know, kids. They, they, so they're they coming the in yeah. with that compassion. And this view yeah. in mind is what yeah. I'm saying. That Rather soul is already awakened to its mm -hmm. inner life. True. And these kids are showing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there are and pianists, speaking, uh, yeah. violinists, there is composers. Uh, there's all kinds of kids in our world who show that genius of uh, experience from the previous life, but they're also charity oriented. They're not mm -hmm. selfishly uh, involved, uh, they're mm -hmm. charity oriented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is hope. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we have all this background before we even are born in this body, you know, and it, we're all at different stages of development. And we mentioned Mr. Judge and HPV, they're sui generis, you know, and they uh, obviously they did not get this done in 45 years of, on their own volition. They, they have, they've had contacts, I think, with the masters, and, and it's quite obvious, uh, all these stories we hear about them, that they had contacts with the masters and they had had uh, many, many lifetimes uh, moving in the direction which they wow. Came, which just showed when they uh, started the Theosophical movement, uh, the modern Theosophical movement. Theosophy has always been with us. Yeah, indomitable willpower. I think they had. They never gave into any pressure from the outside. Exactly. They held the line astray. No doubt yeah. about it. Let's just see if we can do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, they were slandered. They were uh, all kinds of mess going on around them. But they held it, they held to the right. Uh, but if the great ones can do it, we can do it too. Well, they're not any different than we are. We can no. develop to that stature as well. No. They she always says that you cannot reach it in one lifetime, that you no. have to continuously work for it. But culmination of it will be in someone's life, yes.
That's what we, yeah, I think this is, I always have to keep in mind. If I can just make a little teeny uh, difference in this life, I've, I've made a big difference. difference yeah. Because this is just a small part of our existence. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we'll close it